All right. Welcome back, everybody. You're tuning in. Thanks for tuning in to the Shooting Straight with JD and Joey, a handball podcast. Uh, we're hoping to have a break some viewership records here for us since I paid half a uh, half my friends to tune in tonight. So we'll see if uh, they actually cash in. So we'll see. Um, Joey, how are we doing? You had a long day today. I'm doing great. I spent a, a lovely day uh, in the great outdoors of Michigan, um, cleaning my garage. So what was supposed to be about a two-hour job turned into an eight-hour job, and uh, here I am sitting down for the first time in a while. So it feels great. It feels great to be sitting. Excellent. Excellent. Happy for you. Um, <laughs> so we got a lot to talk about today. We had to cut some pieces out of our standard segment to squeeze everything in. So um, where do you want to start? Uh, as all of you are frequent viewers, all topics are down down there somewhere, you know? So um, well, I think we need to start by uh, clearing the air with last week and issuing some, uh, I guess not retractions, but clarifications Clarifications. that's fine um i'll start uh i stand by i back it up here Uh, i was getting a lot of flack on twitter about a comment i made about um being able to play an elite when you're not a uh you know not not elite like a (laughs) yeah yeah basically like when you're not when an elite club which you know for the past eight years have been like Let's say there's, fuck, I mean, my, my brain is still in the garage right yeah, now. Yeah, that's okay. But there's a handful of clubs who play in elite, and uh, unless you live in a city with one of those clubs, um, I believe it's very difficult for you to play in elite. Maybe not impossible. Maybe uh, Obviously, po- people point out exceptions on Twitter. Um, but suffice it to say, if you're, like, let's say, live in a, a city like Detroit or, I don't know, Phoenix or just anywhere, and you're a relatively good handball player, uh, but you don't have connections to a big club. Yeah, it's going to be, I, in my opinion, impossible. Some might say just hard. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to back down from what I said last week. It's uh, the system we 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 have currently is not perfect. And in fact, I think it's a little bit flawed. Um, but you know what? Hey, we're here to talk about it. We're here to work through it. And I appreciate people for calling me out because you know what? Um, keep me honest and that's fine and the more we talk about it um i think that's get the beginning to find a solution to it yeah, yeah. We're, we're we're working on it in some shape or form so it's all about yeah, the benjamins what, you got to have the money to shell out to go to all those tournaments you know having a usa <laughs> team handball sanctioned tournament uh it's going to cost your team anywhere from uh nowadays like six seven eight eight hundred bucks to a thousand for nationals so you figure you're gonna. And that's just nationals. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna sacrifice a uh, probably about four or five weekends, and each one of those weekends, each person on that team is gonna shell out. I don't know, maybe like 150, 200 bucks uh, per weekend. So you, you know, you're looking at each player spending almost a thousand dollars over the course of a handball season just to try to compete to get into elite. Um, personally like you know i like playing handball and it's fun but my main thing is that money should not be the factor here and you look at what those tournaments consist of i could run the same tournament same teams come play same quality but the biggest difference is referees because that's what you're paying for is referees and so you could get volunteer referees and they're going to be the exact same quality as you know the ones we're paying freaking 35 40 bucks a game for so I ain't afraid of <laughs> trashing on the referees, but it's uh, it's definitely the biggest problem in my opinion. Well, I will agree with you with a little caveat because okay. my main man Rafa, who uh, is a Brazilian, he's a youngster, I think probably somewhere around our age. Uh, he's a great ref, and he's like I love talking to him because he's kind of like you, where. You know, he's super passionate about the sport. He wants to be involved, but like, it's funny because he's a ref and yeah, I just, I'm so man. used to talking to somebody who like is Only... that fired up about being a ref, right. but like, I love Rafa and like, Rafa is the man. Rafa, if you're listening, I wish I could have you at every single game and every single tournament. 
weird, man. And I, you know, I, beyond that, I, I kind of agree with you, JD, as far as like the the cost benefit of even attempting to to play an elite. All right, you've started several clubs. I've started a club, and I'll tell you right now, it's borderline not worth it to even attempt to go to a. Yeah, like, what are we going to get out of it? We're going to have a bad time. Nobody's going to have fun. They're going to be like, why did we spend all this money? And I lost a whole weekend of my life. So, um, well, yeah. I and I mean, just like in general, like, we're trying to get athletes. We're trying to grow the sport. And it's so freaking difficult to get somebody to, like, make that $1,000 commitment yeah. for the time to lead up. And I understand people do it. And I understand, like, it, like, but we're not selling somebody that knows how to play handball. We're playing selling somebody that oh, you've never played handball. All right, give me a thousand dollars and let's go on an eight-hour car. Never ride. even heard of handball. They've never even this like See these later, are people, who, average Joe. So not like somebody who even has a conception of what the sport is, and we're expecting them to spend Just, time and money out of their life to to compete for. Quite frankly, I'm, I'm, I mean, not to get crap a, on. Yeah, you just get a nice high five, a firm handshake, and a nice, you know, five dollar medal. So, if that's you what, get a, a plastic trophy if we if you win the national championship of the United that's, States. Uh, so that's what it's worth it for you, everybody. Cool, go for it. I'm not I'm not trying to do that, but if that's what you guys like, <laughs> fine. But there's talks Sounds about like great for us, but it's just <laughs> we're <laughs> shooting straight here. Yeah, yeah, we're not we're not dodging any bullets. We're just going right down the line. Um, but uh, yeah, there's talks about, you know, some prize money, you know, and uh, I think that would be interesting. You definitely get a lot more teams of people that don't have handball experience to join in where if I tell, you know, a couple D1 guys like, hey, you know, you want to go win some money, like all you got to do is ball out against these, you know, old timers. Like, sure, they don't have the handball experience, but like, I might give it a good oh, run, oh, oh. you know? Yeah. I mean, well, I- you know, just as I would do, if I get a couple D3 guys, like, that's more than enough. JD, yeah. I'll kind of push back with you a little bit because I do like the money idea, and I think that that does need to be a thing. Um, but I, it's a little bit – we, we uh, do it the right way, I think. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, yeah. the route that we need to go about because – so for our 3v3 league, I kind of threw that idea of, like, making it for money. And, like, the dude who, like, was kind of my, like – sensei mentor yeah. who's helping me get all this stuff set up and he's got a lot of experience in Detroit. He was, I'll never forget. This, this is a good quote. He said, uh, people will play hard for a t-shirt, but people will kill for money. I'm like, Oh yeah, that's kind of a good point. You know, really? you get those uh, double, uh, you know, shooting sleep. I do once it, once it becomes money, it's real. about money. Pe- dude, people up. like, like we talk about people crawling down the throats of refs right now. It'll that will be like a different level. So we million gotta times ready. worse. Can, yeah, I mean, be, people don't realize like the hostility of uh, a couple of Eastern European guys that they mean well. <laughs> it's just in their nature that they're going to go off. That's without money. That's without money. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, you know, like, some of who are used to just going at it with the refs. Yeah. It, not even just oh, refs, no. just on the court and everything in life. Like, you know, you just. I have a lot of friends of, of Eastern European descent and they're good guys, but I don't want to make them angry. And like, it's just uncomfortable. So I don't know if that's just yeah. our Midwestern attitude towards it, but, um, Midwest nice. Yeah. So anyways, uh, <laughs> I don't, I didn't, you face a little bit more, uh, criticism, I would say from discussion, which led to you getting a little bit of a one-on-one time with the coach of Cal Heat, which leads us to topic numero uno. Well, wait, hold on. Oh, I think right. uh, you know uh, the great province of Alberta. The oh, <laughs> I don't think I, I don't know. I don't know what they're, they're asking. I still, I asked the guy, he said he was like 27 or something. Okay. I'm just, I, all right. You can ask what, him yourself. I, they, I they, saw they, what they said. I, I'm I'm sticking true to my my word there. I John Ryan said that he said he talked to them as well, and he said the average age was 21. Well, if the average age is 21, that means there's people over 21, which means that it's not a junior team. So just call yourselves Alberta 
we're done. Like, end. Long story <laughs> short, neither of us are apologizing for anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, excellent. So, segue. <laughs> Joey went on to talk with uh, the head coach of Cal Heat, Mr. Danilo, as you called him, Danny. I don't know how to pronounce his last name, so I'm not going to insult him by saying it incorrectly. So why don't you uh, tell us a little bit how A, that came about, and B, why, and C, what you guys (laughs) talked about, and I'm out of letters to to ask. Uh, That's about the extent of my alphabet knowledge as well, so no worries. Good, good. But yeah, he, I kind of knew him. I'm like... I've got a little like bromance with with Cal Heat because I really like what they do with like they're, the youth stuff and they're the they're, model they're, to follow. I'd say, uh, you know, some might some might say some might agree with you, um, but uh, yeah, he like DM'd me. I don't know what prompted it. I Sweet think it was right because uh, Handball Ninja, uh, you know, called me out a little bit on the on the Twitter spear, and he might have seen that, but. Regardless, we've been, uh, you know, going back and forth on Instagram for a little bit. And, uh, yeah, he just wanted to do, like, some kind of Instagram live thing. And it's like, all right, I'm, I like talking. So, uh, yeah. Talk, talk, talk. It was, it was pretty good. Good. Yeah, no, it was a good conversation. I mean, dude, it, it's just funny, like, hearing people's, like, perceptions on stuff. Like, yes. California might as well be – and Timbok too compared to Detroit. You know what I mean? But we're oh, kind of yeah. we got similar opinions on stuff and different opinions on stuff. I'm all over the place right now. What's going on? Gotta um, get your act together there, kid. Seriously. But it was kind of fun. It was like a quasi uh podcast a little bit. I think yeah. we might we might keep that going. It was it was entertaining. Right. Bring him on to the show. You know, there you go. Shoot straight. So yeah, oh, sure. uh, I I listened in, and there's a lot of interesting points in there. Um, what do you disagree with? I don't know. As someone who's started a team, uh, and I look at the situation, and there's been some emails going back and forth about growth models. Uh, I think when you have a situation where, let's just say, you know, I'm not very familiar with the Detroit uh, landscape, but if I have people who live in Dearborn and I have people that live in Ann Arbor and I make them practice some other part of eight mile, you know, wherever Eminem's from. And, uh, (laughs) you know, your you know, your geography. And if I, if I have them practicing there, so they're both driving like here to meet in the middle, but let's say like I have like 10 guys in Dearborn and 10 guys in Ann Arbor why not just have the one team practice in Ann Arbor and one team practice in Dearborn? You know, Dude, I'm I, that's you. all I'm, that's all I'm suggesting. Um, but to each their own. Back a little bit on that because quite frankly, and I mean, we're not a very old club, so who knows more people could come out. I'm not saying you, I'm saying like people that have had their act together for quite Devil's some time. Advocate. Fair. Devil's advocate Fair. go over here. Um, I just, I know that, and I'm sure it's the same in Columbus. People come from, like you said, a wide yeah. range of places, but it'll maybe be like one or two people from each place. Right, right. But I know what you're getting at, and I like it, and I'm like, I'm titillated by that idea. Like, there's, but the wheels are turning, and I'm, I'm trying to figure out a way that, like, that can be incorporated in what we're doing. Cause I, I think, Breaking it up and having meaningful games, even if they're not oh, to play in an elite, right. like, even if that's not, you can, I can buy a trophy that's probably nicer than the USA team handball yeah. national championship trophy. And I can arrange something. I can do a three V three league and, and get people actually buying into the sport more than, Oh, we, we are going to go play, you know, and it's all marketing. If you Pittsburgh. tell people to come out, and watch the game like you're gonna eventually get one or two people they're gonna tell some friends and a couple more people are gonna come and yeah. sure the quality of play isn't like freaking ehf level but is it, it doesn't matter <laughs> people have never Dude, seen the game elite? elite is not even elite would lose the the beer league i played in in denmark the the i <laughs> would venture to say new york city i mean they're great yeah look how they finish at super Gold. like they're not 
indestructible. You know, it's not like, you know, it, we're being handball purists here and, and saying like, you know, oh, it's a bastardization of the game when, when you got people playing who aren't really you from know, handball blood. blood. Yeah. Yeah, man. Let, let people throw around a ball and, and that's enough. Uh, that's how I got pretty much most of my team. Yeah. It's just that three V three league that I didn't, I don't, I don't really know the rules, quite frankly. I'll be honest. Yeah. I, I'm not some technician or tactician, and I could barely even ref. I the last game of the three v three league, I was about to like pee my pants because like they were actually having fouls, and I like had to step like, up and like make decisions. Yeah. yeah, I had to like pretend like I knew the rules, which was terrifying. You know, and thank God there's a ton of people in the club who have like fake it till you make it. it. I played goalie because I don't want to learn the rules. Mm-hmm. They, they don't want to learn. I don't want to learn the yeah. rules. So, yeah, man. I don't know where this tangent went, but um, oh, I, I, it's just tough because you know there's a a model that I feel like has been the case for the last several decades. Where hey, let's just find more foreign guys because you know getting the American guys, they'll come out and they'll won't come back. They'll come to practice. They don't like it, but it's not the case. It's the people. I think it, I know. I'll, you know, people murder me for that opinion, but I think the people have a lot to do with it. No. Um, no. Case in point would be our team here in Columbus. We've almost tripled in size uh, thanks to us removing our former coaches. Like they, <laughs> Wait, they what? had they had a, an Eastern European mentality, and. Uh, Pinball or death. Yeah, and we they just didn't know how to work with Americans. Like, it's just the reality of it. Um, so it's one of those things where we have to understand who we're trying to get. And you and I are trying to get the same athletes. But some of these elite clubs are not – they don't care. They want to get guys that already know how to play handball. Why are they going to waste their time on a six foot four former D1 college football player? doesn't mean anything to them they just want people that know how to play handball and they'll take a Which in you know, sense, it's you fine know it's gonna win yeah you know, i can't blame them they're they're winning so they're winning and you know what they they have different incentives to to operate the club the way they want to and yeah. um, to, to, they, they have different reasons for playing they like to they're passionate about the sport yeah, they like, right you know? they didn't grow they, up um you know, in a situation like us where, you know, we love the sport, but it was a like, gym class <laughs> game <laughs> people and nobody would even know what I'm talking about. Right. You know what I mean? So it's just a different mindset and which is fine. We can coexist. This is the land of opportunity, gigantic country, 33 million or 300 something million people. No reason that, you know, both can't thrive and, you know, support each other. Right. Right. It's just tough. So tough getting everybody on the same opinions and views but it doesn't matter right jd we how got many it. people live in the state of ohio um, lots <laughs> i don't know probably 10 million, uh, 10 million. yeah that's what i was gonna say <laughs> yeah be the king of ohio man you got 10 million people if you got i mean i don't even know what the biggest club in america is but i'm sure you could create the biggest club in america just instead of you know ohioans right yeah yeah think about that so I'll tell you a little secret here on what me and my interns are working on right now. It's a okay. high school campaign. Um, you know, it's one of those things that personally, I think there's such a disconnect between high school to college, college to the adult clubs. College sure. players don't know what adult clubs exist. You know, like I had, Seriously? I had eight of my guys just graduate from Iowa State. They've been playing handball for four or five years. And they don't even know like New York yeah. City. Some of them do, but no, I mean they don't really know anything about it. Like the one guy's oh, moving sure. to LA, and he didn't know LA had a team. And it's like, does LA have a team? Sometimes. <laughs> so <laughs> um, it's one of those things that's like there's no, you know, unless you're a team like a North Carolina, West Point, Air Force that's playing with these other adult teams all the time. Like we have 15 college teams and then I just mentioned what four teams that are pretty regularly involved. Maybe you want to throw in, you know, a Virginia or a Penn state that play in the Northeast league of West Virginia, whatever. But 
those guys aren't i don't know they're there's not i don't see a lot of guys that played in college that are going to play you know like i'm just saying i'm being real like i've been around this long enough to see multiple graduating classes get pushed and the only group that follows to their um like graduates and then continues playing are the carolina alumni team and the armada i mean i I assume i assume who i mean i assume (laughs) all those guys are done except they had a run (laughs) <laughs> they had a run for a few. Dylan uh, and Ross want to get back into it, I know. So, and Anthony, but anyways, that's that's my point. So, what we're working on is reaching out to uh, graduating high school seniors, and basically like talking. We're going to talk to the coaches and athletic directors, and basically say like, you know, if you're if you have athletes that are going to these colleges, like please contact us, and we can get them in yes. and it's like does oh, that JD. do any work for us like does that work any scrap any skin off our back no it's not hard Zero. it's just sending an email like it's I, I don't think that that's a big deal but that's the kind of stuff that needs to be done like at least get the conversation started whether they ignore it and they at least saw it it's at least yep. in their mind and maybe yep. you know you send a hundred emails and you get one guy to respond that one guy's got five friends and now you got almost a full team. He's got a younger brother and then you can backwards fill back at the high school. It's just, I don't know. You know what, JD, you send a hundred emails that takes what, you know, a half hour max. Yeah. And that just, one it's the same email times. template. Yeah. Yeah, dude, like effortless stuff. And you know what? Like, yeah, that's a, that's a brilliant idea. I think just sending out maybe a little pamp or, I mean, even a video. A video would be oh, kind of video. Sweet. Like, you know, ah, go to, you're you smart. to any of these colleges. It's getting reach out, out written out. down. Yeah, I wouldn't. I don't think that would take much at all. So Martin from Cal Heat had me put together like a recruiting letter to send yeah. to their high school seniors. I don't think hey. many many guys from the Cal California area are going to be coming to Ohio State, but. I still have like a full like two page letter. It's got a breakdown of our accomplishments, uh, you know, national team recognition, what our facilities have at Ohio State, basically like a little recruitment package. So I sent yeah. that to him and you know, Dude, just stuff to, to do. Every high school in in Ohio and Yeah. In done. 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 Seriously. I would have if I could have played lacrosse at Ohio State as well, I would have Dude. come literally just for him. <laughs> oh, that, would like been, that would have been nuts to play at Ohio State. Been, so I don't think – I mean, granted, I'm not – I wasn't that good. I'm not that good. Yeah. So, like, playing a Division One sport, I don't yeah. think I would have been able to actually play handball. But if Hope College or if, like, Adrian College had a club Adrian, handball, yeah. then I could have played lacrosse D3. Yeah, sign yeah. me up. I'm there. What could have been? What could have been? So, anyways, uh, that's all I got on the coffee. So, there was a lot of other stuff. Everybody go back, give a listen. I don't know if it's too late. Maybe, probably. Might not be. I can probably repost it. I, I think know. I saved it. It was a nice yeah, discussion. Yeah, um, it was fun. I, I enjoyed it. So, moving along in our, our discussion here tonight, we got uh, – do you want to go into the PLL or talk about Mr. Captain America, Drew Donlin? Um, let's talk PLL because I All feel right. like that's another like, long gets thing you, that we can kind of – Get you fired fire up. Yeah. As two <laughs> fellow lacrosse players, it's this is one that's close to our, close to our hearts here. Um, for those of you unaware, PLL, the, profesh- the premier – the Premier Lacrosse League recently signed a TV deal with NBC to host a, I think it's 16 day, 20 game, uh, or maybe it's 20 day, 16 game, uh, yeah. championship series in July. No fans, but fully televised uh, lacrosse. During when the Olympics would have been. Yeah, yeah. So this is huge for them. It's just big for sports in general. Um, but basically, their their whole model for for the league is a traveling band of lacrosse teams. So it's kind of like the circus. Like, you know, lacrosse comes to town. You don't really have any city ties. It's just like you have your your fan of a player, or maybe there's like te- there are teams, but you can 
I don't know, just pick a team based on their logo or who you like, I guess. And um, yeah. they just play games against each other throughout the year. But I think this, I haven't, I didn't look too much into the championship model, but it's just a 16 team bracket. I think um, it's like they have seven teams. It's like not even a big oh, crap. League. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah the, the, water <laughs> the water dogs, the water dogs threw everything off. Uh, but, uh, so yeah, the, by what you and I talked about last time with our barge idea, which ended up being, uh, shot down really? by, by, yeah, <laughs> I forget what company I reached out to. They didn't, weren't, weren't a fan of the idea, but they lack vision. Yeah. Yeah, there's plenty of other companies out there. <laughs> they at least knew what handball was. So at least there's that, um, they'd said we'd end up playing more water polo than handball. Um, which but basically, funny. yeah, they they had jokes, which is nice. Um, what I personally would like to pursue is same kind of thing: is that we are currently in this quarantine. We everybody doesn't have any sports to watch. Why not put handball out there? I mean, we had our big wave of success from having the uh, the cha- the Euro Championship games or the World Championship games on the Olympic Channel a couple of weeks ago, and that was huge. That was big, um, and I think that just having any kind of live sports. I mean, the freaking ESPN's playing live cornhole right now, where you got guys wearing Crocs and wearing their masks in an empty list like warehouse. You. Like, is this really what people want to watch? Literally, I'm like on Twitter all day, except for today. But uh, I'm looking Garage for people life. who are tweeting like at cornhole, right? And like I'm just following and like responding to as many like cornhole people as possible because I feel like those are those are the type of folks that I think will get. You, could, you think we can you know tap I mean? into the cornholers? Uh, I know that uh, like for instance, my father-in-law, avid cornhole player, very good at cornhole. Uh, I don't really? think I could get him into like being a competitive handball watcher. But he does like sports, so that's – it might be. It might be. But he's big time into cornhole. I just feel like the people – you know how, like, lacrosse guys tend to make the transition? Like, people yeah. who are into, like, cornhole, into watching cornhole on ESPN, like the type of people that, <laughs> they, that those people They're are, going to watch it. I feel like they would be a fan of handball, yes. you know, at least some of them. I don't know. I could be completely off base here, but uh, – yeah, no. I feel I, like there's some kind of Venn diagram where there's a we a, should yeah make something. Portion. Lacrosse is the the underlying theme I think that we really need to focus on. So, but the problem is True. that the lacrosse guys cool. are you know focused on lacrosse. It's already small enough for them that they can't spread their wealth of fandom. I, I think lacrosse is too mainstream now. I think it's gone. It's gone like corporate. As much as I we love to seeing get it, that, you, that's what I'm hearing is hipsters time. Let's let's tap no. into the who's who's looking for the next hot sport. Because I agree that like when I started playing lacrosse, which would have been 14 years ago, 15 years ago. Yeah, it was relatively like unknown here in Ohio. Like um, Central Ohio has had a pretty strong lacrosse community since like the 70s, 60s, 70s. So sure. it's big in Columbus and uh, it's grown a lot yeah. in Cincinnati and uh, Cleveland, but otherwise it's, but it's kind of expanding to the rural communities, which I find pretty interesting. Um, but like when you see it getting into like small, you know, country towns, people are buying lacrosse equipment and stuff. It's like, this is not a cheap sport. Like this is not something you just casually like get into. Uh, whereas handball is like all you need is a ball and uh you know goals pretty easy to come by especially if you got soccer you can jerry rig a soccer goal or play on uh you know underneath the basketball hoop with the pads like you can find a quick answer for that without relatively no expenses i mean i i i think that's should be an easy sell but um when i pitched the idea to my brother-in-law about starting a team and some of his buddies at a high school in a rural community there's a lot of pushback from the principal and like teachers because no no no, for handball just because in a smaller school district the funding isn't there and while i told them clearly like you wouldn't have to pay for anything like i would supply everything they're like, well, that's what soccer told us. And then we had to buy jerseys and then buses and 
a field and practiced all this other stuff. And I was like, all right, well, I'm not trying to, I'm trying to stir the pot too much there. So, um, but yeah, Maybe, it's, I mean, I'm sure you tried this, but it might have been worth coming back with. We don't have to make this an inner school thing. We can make it intramural. You don't have to buy bus. Like, yeah, it was literally just this is what it is. A few weeks of ten kids playing against each other in the gym that's not being used. Yep. I give you everything. No, no more than that. We're not going to try to recruit the other high schools. Like that's right. crazy. Like we just have intramural. It's better than nothing. Right. Right. I don't know. Yeah, so that's part of the email with my interns that we're going to pitch. It's, uh, the gym teachers are included on this so that we can have a little bit more robust gym class program. Like, How'd you get interns, by the way? <laughs> um, you just got to ask the right people. So like like Mike uh, Gordon at Penn State has interns as well. Um, what? Yeah, so I would talk with like any um, – college that has like a sports management program and yeah. just talk to the professors and be like, Hey, you got any kids that are looking for, a, you know, an unpaid internship basically that'll get them some good, you know, marketing communications background in the world of sports done. So like I have two guys, one of them I went to high school with and the other uh, played D three football and they're both just Where at? a capital here in Columbus. It's a small, it's where Lewis House played football. No kidding. Mm-hmm. All American. Lewis, Lewis House posted a picture about uh, playing football capital, and I was like, "Oh, maybe you could help me start a handball team there." And what? He liked no. it, but he didn't didn't respond. So. Oh, he liked it, yeah, dude. That's that's progress. progress. He's, he's a big deal. Um. So yeah. So there's a lot lot of options there. I would pursue sports management programs in your Detroit area and see who's I'm sure Michigan has something. Wayne so, state does. I Wayne emailed state their like be... sports management club and they never e- emailed me. I would, <laughs> it's the clubs. I made a description. What's that? I would back away from the clubs. They're just, just typically unresponsive. It's, it was kind of a funny email though. I'm, I'm going to try to pull it up so I can read it to you. It was, I like, I made it look serious. And then like the content might've been what scared people away. Um, but it was like also kind of in the lead up to nationals. So, um, that was, I thought the USA team handball, you know, uh, carrot would have been a nice little badge for someone's resume, but I guess, uh, yeah, no, it's, I don't know. Oh, I'll, Melissa's I'll, I'll looking for interns talking. too. That made me, that reminded me. So any viewers out there, which we don't have any, uh, if you are looking for, uh, an internship with USA team handball, talk to Melissa. Did they not hire one? Because they were I looking for a lot of that. Don't. I th- she, last I talked with her, she was looking for another one. So That's brutal. Damn. Come did on, find, people. Did you find Handball that? needs help. Yeah, big time. Because the people how that fun? are... Well, we won't get into that. I was going to go no, off on I people mean, that don't cool want to help. If you're a college kid and you're like involved in handball like we all know this thing's gonna blow up whether it's 10 years 20 years who knows but like you know to be in at the ground floor like that's just that's my that's why i sell people you know like you want in here's your ticket i got it everyone's gonna look back and be like ah could have could have been ah all right go ahead i'll I'll, I'll catch up next time could have been a contender but that's the thing it's like i was watching these games from like 84 and it was like U.S. Open Nationals, and it was Dennis Burkholz and Kavanaugh, and they're having the same discussion you and I are having right now, and that was 40 years ago. So it's like, I'd like to think that like they were like, oh, yeah, it's going to be the next big sport. It's like, what happened? Yeah. So I don't know. It Hopefully is, 40 years from now, sport. we don't have to eat our words on this. Hey, J.D., have you ever seen the video? I think it's called, like, Sushi Masters or something. Oh, those guys, like, they're, they're, they were apparently the, the top-notch, top dogs. They, well, the, this video is, like, them, they're playing in the, the Cal Heat gym. The, against the Finnish team, the Dickin, right? Nah, yeah, yeah. Did you watch that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, the like, funniest thing. those guys, yeah. when they're playing that, are, like, in their, they're in their, like, mid to late 40s going against, like, the defending Finnish, like club champions, like nineteen to twenty five. Yeah, yeah. Like it's 
not it's not fair like they you know they they don't keep score obviously but like i think they like held their own decently i was impressed it was weird did you see the interviews before where yeah, they're like <laughs> like we are a very it's like these old dudes yeah. we're very technically sound and uh you know we or we're, we're a good, you know, solid, fundamental team and, like, cuts to these Finnish kids and they're like, these guys are really old. Like, <laughs> yeah. exactly. If we can just slow them down when they're on offense and then it's just cuts to a Finnish guy. They're yeah, old. Playing with like old guys. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Like, it was a joke. Yeah. Yeah, but, I mean, they, they arranged it. It happened. Like, it was, you know, something that I think that you and I could definitely work on doing because I know when I talk to the dudes – uh, Cine, the Cine school that we played in Denmark, like those guys go um, to Indonesia usually for their like trip every year. Like, why not come to America? You know? Um, and I know like uh, when we played in the Canadian National Championships a couple years ago, uh, Gary Hines' team from Germany, they came over and played instead of going to Mallorca to party, they came over to win a Canadian National Championship. So it's like. <laughs> You know, <laughs> and then they party. Right? And they party, yeah, exactly. So, I don't think partying in Toronto, in a suburb of Toronto, is quite the same as Mallorca, but whatever they're into. So, no. so what I have this thing pulled up uh, what I, that I sent. Go um, ahead. And it's like with our like logo leatherhead, and it says in big letters, "Wanted: colon, ambitious visionary who wants ambitious visionaries." who want to be a part of a sporting revolution. And then uh, Detroit Handball Club is seeking interns, uh, in parentheses, official title, uh, aid de handball, who will, assist, who will assist in the operation management of the club. And then it goes on. But, yeah, I just thought that was a little bit funny. But Good. I guess the Wayne students didn't Wayne's. think it was funny. You got to tell freaking Pierre to get those kids together, you know? <laughs> Oh yeah, Pierre's all about that, dude. Pierre, Pierre I'm so was sad. Watching. Pierre was supposed to come back. Like I would have been, he's supposed oh, to be back this he's weekend. Come back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll, no, he'll, he'll, he'll come back. Just gotta find him Shit. a job. Uh, if anybody knows any, uh, what does he do? He does app developer like, for I iOS, do. iOS app developer. So, yep. Hmm. Um, yeah, um, we would have been winning a national championship with him. Dude, wow. Yeah. It's because Max, you and Max came to an agreement on uh, contract negotiations there. So mm -hmm. I think that was, was yeah, yeah, smart move on your part. Um, shout out to uh, Ryan Davis as our lone viewer here. Uh, he's interested in oh, the Brian. intern position. So uh, Ryan, thank you. You are more than welcome to intern with me or you can intern with USA Team Handball, whichever you so choose. Uh, sidebar that when you we were talking yeah, you about. Yeah, you could do both. It's probably definitely in the current situation uh you have time for uh sidebar about the canadian national championship so uh i got a red card in our last game and uh it was everyone was very upset with me but as a result we don't ever have a backup goalie so uh we had one of our guys gary perriman he uh <laughs> he he volunteered to play goalie and he didn't have a cup and so we were playing Okay. I think we were playing the German team at that point. Yeah, we were playing the German team. And so the German like third string goalie, who was actually like a division one, he's like a first division German goalie at his prime. He was like fifty something. Just... And he was just out there just just balling out still. And he's like, I'll give you my cup. And so he gives him a jock strap and Gary puts the jock strap on over his pants and goes into goal. And it made the oh, German Lord. newspaper like back in Germany. They took a picture of it. Oh, it was That's great. Hysterical. It was great. <laughs> you got to save uh, that picture. <laughs> yeah, I got to go back and find it. But that was, Gary is a true legend. Uh, he's, he's, he's a D1 athlete, an international superstar. Uh, his D1 grandma athlete? his no uh, that's what he always told his grandma when he started playing handball that he was a d1 athlete and his grandma knits the most incredible sweaters uh and so he'll she'll knit these for like really extravagant elaborate sweaters like one was like a snowy field with a barn and a, like a bunch of stars in the sky huh. and gary will go in and put lights in them so he'll get like a battery pack and then like he'll that's like turn badass. the lights on and so the peak of our like 
the peak peak of the sweater in college was we all went out to the bars after our finals uh right before Ohio State was going to play uh Alabama in the Sugar Bowl and uh the one bar uh Joey Bosa and Zeke Elliott are down in there and Gary goes up to them and he's like oh, he's like Bosa you're going to light up Alabama and he turns the turns the sweater on when he says it and they'd all just lost it so uh, that's sick. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Uh, I'm sure he was pretty lit up that night. As uh, yeah, well. yeah, Bosa. yeah, yeah. He lived in our apartment complex. He and Zeke did. Um, so yeah. they, they had a good time over there. You guys were best buds. Shout out to Kinnear. Um, so yeah, uh, that was a long uh, segment there. I also lied, everyone. We have here that we we were gonna do our five ingredients, but I think we're gonna cut that because uh, the plan was. And we were going to actually cook up what uh, Kaylee had suggested from uh, Mike King's ingredient list last week. So he gave us a uh, pickled herring, German relish, celery, some yogurt, and uh, couscous. So Mm -hmm. you and I didn't come up with any answer, really. But Kaylee came up with uh, washing off the, the herring. And then uh, kind of mixing it all together to form like a burger and uh, like serving it with the relish um, on top. So I was like, all right, that seems like edible. So we were going to make that. And I, I think we're going to punt and do that for next time. So yeah. we will Save call we'll, we'll call our next person next week so we can have, uh, I mean, we'll do that next week. So punting on the, the dinner situation. Uh, I feel like we had something else that I just must not have typed in. Uh, how about Ty and, uh, oh, Hint- yeah, I didn't get to listen in to, they, they just played some more, they played some more. So I didn't, I didn't hear him saying anything particular. Just- Hank, every time, uh, Billy was playing. So every time Billy brought up handball, like Hank yelled at him. So they really didn't talk about handball. I listened okay. to like that. Okay. Well, Billy's doing his thing. You Billy, imagine. Billy still hasn't signed our contract yet. I He's... don't even know if I'd want Billy. Quite frankly, I mailed him something, didn't DM me and say thank you. It never arrived, so fine. Hey, Billy, what'd you what'd you send what'd him? The Dennis Rodman of Team Handball. You can go to play for Chicago because Detroit doesn't want you, buddy. All I right, mean, that, Dennis Rodman. He's coming to Columbus, Detroit. man. I'm telling you, he's I, six four. I'll take that. News, man. I'll take There's plenty slingers. of six four guys out there. You know, there's plenty of six four. And I feel like he's a little bit of a diva. You know, he, he probably he's got all, all this fame from his internship, and people like pat him on the back for every tweet he sends out. I mean, seems like a nice enough guy. But the you fact think we can say, get him on the show? You think we can get him on the show? No, and I, I quite frankly wouldn't even want it. All right, I fine. Want you, I we think don't we. Want, I, really, I think I can get him on the show. I think we can have him on and answer, settle this right now, and Billy not football, not today, but. All right. Detroit's a blue collar, hardworking town. All right. We don't have, we, we, we don't expect much from anyone. Look, so, I looked uh, up his house, his parents' house. It. It's a nice house. What? He's got a nice house. What? His parents' house. He lives with his parents. It's a nice house. <laughs> Shout out to live with the parents. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. I mean, Joe Burrow, he's making, oh, cool. you know, a bunch of money. We can't all be it's fine. Yeah. So. Uh, but yeah, cool. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna see, I'm gonna see if Billy wants to come on. I'll, I'll give him, I'll give him a buzz. All right, um, well, cool. Then we can duke it out face to face. I can say exactly. Don't uh, even want you. So next, what? I, oh, Drew, 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 Captain America. So for those of you who don't know, here's a picture of our main man, Mister Andrew Donlin, taking on. FC Barcelona, Barcelona Lassa. Barcelona. This is uh, actually for the people who don't follow handball. Barcelona is actually Detroit's rival. Yeah, big time. Uh, we have a very simulated we have, we have handball beef. So that, no, it's a real, it's a real beef now. I okay. actually hate them. Yeah, All right, they hate us. Good, so. good. That's the way it is. It's sports. That's that's how it works. But yeah, here's Drew uh, getting some good old fashioned action in there. Uh, I think he's pretty sure he scored against Barcelona, which is like a huge thing for an American to do. So 
Uh, he's born raised. Not here. a big deal for Detroit to do, but yeah, good for him. <laughs> I remember. I remember our first time. And I'm, I'm happy. I actually, I'm happy. It's a good, it's a good feeling. You yeah, know, when yeah. Against Drew, Drew's a man. He's been a nice guy. Against them on the Twitter sphere for for weeks now. <laughs> As uh, our good friend Max Lipman would say, you uh, own some real estate in their heads, so it's a good place to be. Um, Playing the mental game. Exactly. So Drew actually is part of the WCAP program, which is the World Class Athlete program, and it basically allows him to be a active set service member of the military and be a professional athlete. So it's a pretty cool program. Like If you're in the military, you can... Basically, you know, rather than your active duty, but you're getting to be a pro athlete. So um, it's good for him. And he's actually was re-signed his contract with Leon, uh, Adamar Leon in Spain, um, where he, I'd say he played okay. I know that he's got some things to work on, but uh, he got a lot of playing time. Perfect. Yeah, Perfect, exactly. Right? Exactly. Um, he, it would be kind of arrogant for him to be that American who went over there and do it like jay cutler like thank mm-hmm. goodness jay cutler didn't go over because i don't think any european team would want any american halfbacks he would just make all the other yeah. all the other players on the team drew is bad. an excellent role model so, to pave the way for everybody else so uh he's modest he's, yeah. a, he's a good guy very very nice guy fellow midwesterner so uh he's yeah. got that that mentality why is it uh, why is it in minnesota yeah yeah it's up there man uh that's a, another person that I got to talk to him is what, what his brother's doing. His, his younger brother was supposed to be the handball prodigy of the family. Uh, he started playing with Craig when he was like a teenager or something like that. Um, I don't know what he's doing now. So I, you know, Drew, if you're, if you're, you're, too. Drew, you're, you're probably not watching right now. Cause it's like three in the morning, but if you watch tomorrow, let us know what your brother's up to. Uh, we need to sign him ASAP. Sounds good. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, but yeah, so it's a big thing for Drew, and we're trying to get more American guys like him to get deals like that. So, thank you to the Forum Club Handball uh, that allows us to make that happen. So, let's talk about there's two other guys who are doing good stuff. That's yeah. Ty, who's playing for Flensburg. Which Ty Thomas Reed. Yep. Shout out Ty, who's uh, now, I guess, of Barstool fame. Yeah, um, yeah he's, he's a repeat on a, It on helps a being like a former, you know, Alabama football player, a national champion. I think that adds a bit of a, to his resume. Was he on the team? Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's got, got a national I, championship. I think I one. I don't know if he's got two. I, I think he just, he's got at least one's one. Pretty, one's, one's still good. Nice. Even if you're, uh, uh, he was a, I think he started out as like third string quarterback and moved to like receiver. I think he's got like one no catch, way. one catch for like three yards or something like that. But still in the stat line, that's a that's a club Good trail job. for I, for Mark Titus right there. Um, I had no idea. Yeah. I had no idea he was. Uh, I I had heard he was a wide receiver at Alabama, and then I just kind of thought like, okay, like, like a Rudy situation. Yeah. But, <laughs> That's cool. No, I no, mean, no. Even if it was nothing against that, like I mean, I played backup for a Division three lacrosse team that wasn't even. They were pretty good towards the end, but they weren't like excellent. Yeah. So I have no room to talk at all. I'll hands I, up on that one. You, know? you, you can still talk more than I can, so I'll stop talking. Uh, <laughs> not uh, enough, man. This is not. You but, know, this uh, isn't a uh, yeah, measuring contest. Yeah. You can. You can yeah, so, about this. so good for Ty with Flensburg second team. He's also in the Forum Club handball program, and uh, he's be sweet if he gets on the first team. I mean, Flensburg's a pretty that would be, baller. That would be cool. Um, and then for our the third, people, that would be like, yeah, that would be like uh, I don't even know how to compare it, but like he would be on. It'd be like, like the, you you playing Patriot. for like uh you know a double A. Uh, baseball team and then getting bumped up to the Yankees. It's like Tebow making it to the right. MLB. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. Done. That's the comparison. Perfect. Beautiful. Well well done, Joseph. Um yeah, so that'd be that'd be cool for Ty. Uh he's working hard. His uh wife's also in the military, so everybody's got, you know, 
Got some nice. good military connections out there. Uh, and our third guy, no military connections, but just a, I don't know how he, he really invested in his Michael Lee, like Mike, he, uh, he, he didn't, Mike. he didn't have like the, like, so Drew and Ty are both in FCH and Mike didn't go that route. He just talked to, uh, Hendrick, who's, uh, another USA, uh, Hendrick Schultz. He's a team USA goalie as well. Um, and Hendrick got him a spot on his team in, uh, outside Cologne and Mike found his own job. He found his own apartment. He's like just making it Mike's work. The man. Mike is Mike's living the American dream in Germany. Yeah. It's, it's actually Congrats. very impressive. So um, he's gotten pretty solid playing time as well. Uh, so shout out to Mike Lee. Uh, and he's one of the only dudes, I mean, aside from Ty drew, I guess Gary, yeah. um, who <laughs> we forgot about Gary. <laughs> Because so, Gary's been there for a decade. Gary doesn't count with the, like this sort of wave. He's yeah, like a general. Yeah, yeah you know, he was, he's still he's still killing but, um, it. Yeah, I mean he can still jump over people. Just sweet. But um, yeah, Mike. Uh, Mike's the man, and I love Mike. I loved him even before he like went over to Europe and like put it all out there and, and really took a risk. But mm-hmm. like just because he did that and he didn't have it, like necessarily any help, like I respect him even more than i already did which was a lot so go mike i doubt he'll ever see this but like he is the absolute man mike yeah, it's good it's good for him um cool well, that's that's our european breakdown i don't know how we i don't know what we how we got there but let's move on to our one of our last segments here because we got the 10 minute mark uh so everybody's watching the the last dance everybody that has cable i should say or some form of uh, TV viewing options. I don't have cable, so I am not watching it. I'm also not a Bulls fan or was around to watch Michael Jordan. So while it's interesting, I'd, I'd watch it if I could. I'm not going out of my way to watch it. But it's still a good thing to talk about. Joey, are you watching it at all? I guess I shouldn't just badmouth it. I assume um, you I probably watched the part where it's like the Pistons, but okay. I mean, I'm like you. I'm not – I don't really – not a big basketball guy. Right. And uh, I don't know. I guess that I just haven't really watched it. I don't know what it has been. I enjoyed the Pistons episodes. Those have been fun. That's <laughs> yeah, it sounds I like kinda... Pistons got trashed on because they didn't want to uh, <laughs> shake hands. It sounds like that really screwed Isaiah Thomas over. But He got the rod. Yeah, I didn't realize that was like news, though. I mean, but... I, as much as I'm not a basketball guy, I did know that like by not shaking his hand, like he didn't make the – Dream yeah, I mean that's a huge. It sounds like Jordan just like shoving in his face from like yeah, you're 20 years later. That's why you didn't make. If the that's team. how it is. Then you know what? I didn't. I wouldn't have. I'm. I'm happy he didn't. I mean, obviously, I'm not him. But like, if I'm him, I'd be like, you know what? All right, if you're that petty, like, screw you. I'm glad I didn't make the yeah. dream team. Whatever. But that's just that's just me. So looking at uh, my misspelling here of uh, whirl. Uh, we're just going to assume that we're just going to assume there's a D there. Uh, that's what happens when you don't proofread. Uh, I just jacked up this whole topic section today, uh, but ignore all of that. If you had to put a documentary together on like handball legend that, or someone you think should receive like a full on documentary of their life, who would you choose? Doesn't have to be American. Doesn't have to be whoever. If you don't have anybody, I can go first. You can think, but yeah, you, can... you can go first. All right. So I put together my little. I love, I love the slideshows in here. Uh, so I got in my mind Ivano Balic and Talent Dushabayev. So, wow. Uh, good. Glad you. Glad you asked. I think I got more pictures in there. Hold on. So I will go over Dushabayev first because his name in it to me is just like a crazy name. Like just call him the Dooge. Uh, he's was a <laughs> he, he was the man like even when he was a player back in the day like he's undersized but like very elusive very athletic great like decision maker and, and uh, just he's the guy you'd want leading your team and he's retired from being a player and moved on to like a very illustrious coaching career and he has two sons that are also like on the same pathway like alex his one son who's left-handed is just i don't know if you've watched much of his highlights but he's very good 
he's very good. So I just think it'd be very interesting to like watch the progression of what it's like. It'd be like watching, uh, I don't, I don't know, like the Griffey household, maybe like if Ken Griffey senior became like a coach or something like, I, I don't know what I'm trying to think of what like sporting situation this happens where like guy uh, McCaffrey who except McCaffrey's like a high school coach. The, the, oh, the dad. Okay. The youngsters. That's close. Or, but I'm like, I'm talking like guy is a superstar in his day, gets older, has a kid, becomes like a head coach at a professional level. His kid then also becomes a superstar and he coaches his son. Like that story just doesn't exist in my, and yeah. all of our followers, uh, please let us know if you are aware of that, that line. But, uh, well, how about, uh, I guess it's not a great example. I think like the U S soccer coach had like a situation like that. Oh, Michael Bradley. Yeah. 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 That's it. Well not done. Well done, Joey. That's, it's close. It's close. And then my other guy was Ivano Balic just cuz I figured somebody like him would have a pretty interesting lifestyle and uh got some crazy stories still. And cuz he was like I would say probably the Kobe of the time. Like when I look at handball, like who the stars were, uh it kind of went from like a who's a this guy, uh, dang it, I'm forgetting his name. He had long dreads. He's French. Richardson. Oh, uh, Jackson, Jackson Richardson. Jackson Richardson. Like, he was, like, the guy back in the day. And then yeah. it was Ballage. And then you obviously have, like, Karabatic and Hansen and Sagasen's moving into that next mm-hmm. kind of up. So... I think Ballich would be a cool and Drew Donlin and Tyler. Yeah, yeah, Tyree yeah exactly. Too. So those were my two. You didn't need to do two, but I just I thought maybe I should have just done Duge. the Duge. Duge. Okay. Well, I think, and this isn't a necessarily professional player, but the guy from New York. There's there was this documentary about New York's team a mm-hmm. while back, and Benny Mustafa seems like he's lived about. 10 he, lives. he was a what professional tennis player that and like, like chess player che- too. yeah 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 and and during the like the whole yugoslav yeah like freaking during the 90s just that's interesting. A mess and then comes over here and is like handball god godfather so, um, yeah well, i think he would be interesting and then um there is a movie about this guy but so i don't think this counts but uh for Vesprem, I think it was like 10 or 20 years ago, there's this player, he was Romanian, and he okay. was like the best Romanian player ever. His name was Marion Cosma. And then he was like out one night and got like jumped and like murdered, like in the middle of the season. And like, it was like this huge tragedy for Vesprem, and it still is. So I think, I, I'm pretty sure there has been a movie made in like Romania, but that, that's another like kind of interesting, tragic story. Yeah, so... If you That's heard, just... uh, that reminded me of the, I don't know if John Ryan showed me this or I just found it on my own, but there was a, a story about this. Um, I think it was like uh, about Bangladesh or Bangladesh. And they, oh, yeah, yeah. Sri Lanka. It was Sri Lanka. Lanka. Yeah. yeah. And then, so, so to fill, to fill people in, there's a movie about this. I don't remember what the movie's called, but like, if you just type in like Sri Lankan handball, it'll probably pop up. But basically, these dudes went into Germany and saying they were the Sri Lankan handball team and they just wanted to like train. And so all the Germans and French were like, oh, yeah, like, thanks for coming. Like, we'll, we'll find you like a place to stay like, and like, okay, we'll, we'll give yeah, you, yeah, we'll great. get you all the food and everything you need. Cause like, you know, we never see people from Sri Lanka. So like, yeah, sure. Like we'll give you whatever you want. And so like every day they just like, you know, feasted and lived the high life. And then one day, like the maids went in there to like clean their rooms and like, they are just gone. Like, like nobody saw them and they just like all like, like escaped to, what they went to like Denmark or France or something, and they like left the country because they were trying to get uh, illegally immigrated. Yeah, they yeah, weren't they, even players. You're right. They had they didn't know anything about <laughs> handball. Never played handball before. <laughs> like what a story. <laughs> this is nuts. Seriously. Um. So yeah, if you had, I I don't know how I get my hands on watching that, but I think it'd be very interesting to. I think there's like at least some highlights that you can 
tune in to check out, but freaking nuts. Um, our last segment here that we have is our build a baller. Last week we talked about goalies. This week I say we talk about wings. So Joey, uh, we have like two minutes left. So if you're gonna build short a wing, and can jump high, short and can jump high. That's it, and fast, fast. Short fast. can jump high. Actually, short. Get rid of short. Fast and can jump. Okay, Ooh, good. Because I don't like having them short. Because like I look at when I make a save and I look up, I want to see like freaking, you know, the Megatron running down the sideline. I can just boom hit him, run a little like nice little post in there on a fast break. So I want a big tall wing, but they don't. You know, ever want to put in Whatever America? Reason, though, even the best wings in the world are like. Short. Oh yeah, they're just like, yeah. Last of the smile. Like, I think I'm He's tall like, about it. Really? I don't know. If he, he's not that. I've seen him in person. All right. Yeah. You, yeah true. 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 Um, I might be wrong. I would see. say my attributes are they have to have like a willingness to fall and a crazy arm because you have to be okay with just like diving or doing that little crazy samurai roll thing, which I I try to coach kids how to do that uh, every time. I just look like a fish out of water, so I try to avoid that now. Um, but yeah, that, uh, you took the rest of my attributes. So if you're looking for a cool wing, if you have any of those attributes, you should be playing handball wing. Um, and they also have to be okay with never getting past. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You have to be strictly someone who just likes to run and, uh, maybe you'll get the ball every couple times a game. And but when you do, if you like score, you, then you got to score, ball. you have to score because otherwise everyone's going to hate you and you will never get the ball back. It's uh, facts, facts of life. Um, cool. All right. Well, I think uh, we're right at the, the hour mark. So thanks, everybody, for tuning in. And thank you to our one viewer that we had. Um, it's been a pleasure. And see you later, kids. Until next time. Adios. Do, 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 do. Great stuff, J.D. I hope it is. That was a great podcast. Feeling it. Get some good energy today. Uh, I exited out. I'm sorry. It didn't look like anyone chatted. <laughs>